Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Veg All Guy. It's challenge time. And this is it, a coin. Perry at SW Dweeb came up with a coin challenge idea. For my contribution, I designed this little YouTube casting logo, but all credit for putting the coin together lies completely with Perry. This challenge, for me at least, is all about detail and there's lots here in something that's really quite small. Look at all those tool marks. I could try and clean these up, but instead I want to try and cast them and show as much detail as is possible. So for this, I opted to try Lost Wax Casting. Now, I'm a complete newbie to Lost Wax Casting, so I've tried picking the brains of my betters to help me along the way. Their details are on the screen right now, and I'll be referring to them throughout this video. So to start with, I glued the two halves of the coin together. I also added a little car body filler to the sides to blend the join mark, and then I shortened the feeder and vent sections. From here, I needed to make a silicon mold. This empty sealant tube was a perfect size. Cut down, it needed a base, and plastic cut from a washing detergent bottle worked nicely. It just needed rubbing down with a little fine sandpaper and bonding in place with a few spots of superglue, or in my case, a pig's ear mess of superglue. It was unlikely to be watertight, so some plasticine, modeling clay, play-doh, whatever you call it, was firmly squashed around the edges. Some might call this play-doh, but this is serious and important work, so you certainly won't catch me playing around with this stuff. <clears throat> I needed to attach a sprue and the sharpened stick slotted nicely into a small hole I'd already drilled. Super glue held it firmly. I also glued a cross piece to the stick and added a small amount of plasticine for extra support. The cross piece suspended the coin fairly centrally within the cylinder, ready for the silicon. Now this is the silicon inside my vacuum chamber. After mixing, the chamber is used to force out any trapped air. It expands up to five times its size, and once it collapses, it's ready to pour and form the mould. The mould is then vacuumed again to pull out any air and pick up any extra detail on the coin. And here it is 24 hours later. The plasticine was pulled away from the plastic at the bottom. A sharp utility knife sliced the sealant tube and peeled the outer cover away. With a very sharp blade, this silicon was sliced through until the blade gently brushed against the sides of the coin. This opened the mould and allowed the 3D printed coin to be removed, leaving a perfect coin shaped void behind. Personally, I only sliced one side and left the other as a kind of hinge. The outer skin of the sealant tube can be added to the silicon with a little tape to provide extra support. Here's the hole where the sprue was. I needed to inject wax in here. This is casting wax, and if you ever doubt my commitment to you guys, remember this. This is my wife's saucepan. Once the wax was molten, I sucked some up in a cheap syringe. Then I injected this into the mould making quite a mess at the same time and winning no filmmaking awards. Once this had cooled, I peeled everything back and, well, not brilliant. And I never really managed brilliant either. Such injections are usually vacuum assisted and done with professional machines, which I don't have access to. But despite this, the level of detail was excellent, but the results were lacking a little something. Still, for a first attempt it wasn't too bad, and I was keen to move on to the next stage, building a wax tree. A cheap alcohol burner provided heat, and any suitable metal tool helps melt the wax in place. The trick is to melt both surfaces of the wax when trying to join them together. Historically, the branches of wax trees go upwards, but I pointed mine downwards an upside-down tree, if you like. Professionals like Paul Hamler 
use vacuums at the metal casting stage, and I don't have any equipment like that, so I designed my tree to vent air. My theory was that the metal would enter from beneath the coin voids, pushing air up and out as it went. If nothing else, it made a bizarre looking wax sculpture. I needed to make a flask to hold the wax tree, and I began this with a piece of plastic for the base. A food can was used for the main body, and I traced an outline onto the base. Three small holes were marked and drilled for the vents. The trunk of the tree was pressed firmly into the centre of the base, and the thin wax sprues were pushed through the drilled holes. Wax underneath and a smidgen above sealed these holes. The food can slid neatly over the top of everything. A series of large holes were drilled through the can before it was attached to the base with more plasticine. Then all these holes were taped up and then investment was mixed according to the exact specifications of the manufacturer. This was vacuumed before it was poured into the flask. The filled flask was then vacuumed and tapped to release air and ensure there were no voids. The investment sets in minutes, but it needs to be left two hours before cooking. Obviously, I don't have a burnout oven, but the wax needs to be cooked out of the mould. So I used my electric foundry and increased the temperature 100 degrees every hour until I achieved 630 degrees Celsius. I let this cook for four hours and then I left everything to cool down as I was shattered and needed to go to bed. The next day, the flask was sitting at around 80 degrees, so I placed it in my kitchen oven because the wife wasn't looking, and then I reheated it to 275 degrees, this being as high as my oven will go. Meanwhile, I melted some aluminium or aluminium to our American friends, ready for the pour. I placed the hot flask on some dry sand and poured. It was over a little quick, if I'm honest. The vents seemed to work a treat, though an overspill of the metal choked one of these off. I waited half an hour to dunk the flask in a bucket of cold water, and waited with much anticipation for the frenzied hissing. This was quite an anti-climax. I must have let it cool off too much. This meant I had to spend time soaking and brushing away the investment, but eventually a shiny tree was revealed. With the sprues cut away and filed down, here are the results. I know, they're a little disappointing, but for my first ever attempt at lost wax casting, they're not too bad I suppose. The coins haven't taken all of the detail, but there certainly is an evidence of those wonderful tool marks. So where have I gone wrong? How could I have done better? Well, when it comes to wax injecting, lack of professional equipment was always going to be an issue. But Martin, the old foundryman, and his friend John Dirsch suggested a light dusting of talc and making use of vent holes. And since making this video, I have seen improvements in my wax injections though still not perfect. However, most importantly, John felt that I was using the wrong sort of wax and that I needed one specifically for fine jewelry making. For the investment powder, John recommended fine grade jewelry investment to ensure better detailing. He also mentioned that the flasks should not really be allowed to cool down after the burnout, but should be used as soon as possible. Paul Hamler echoed these sentiments and stressed the importance of vacuum equipment at the metal pouring stage to force the metal against the mould and pick up additional detail. Martin also felt that the metal was wrong. He reminded me that my choice of extruded scraps was unlikely to get optimum results and suggested I buy some proper alloy instead. For me, the feel of the coins was all wrong. Being aluminium, in the hand it felt like toy money. It's a strange thing to describe. It left me feeling deeply disappointed with the whole thing. So I had another go. The wax coins were still a little flawed 
and I decided to use my old Nemesis copper for a heavier feel. I changed the design of the tree to add a pressure well above the coins, even though I know this sort of thing annoys Martin, and then I recast everything. Again the pour was short lived and the crucible got in the way, it was much too large for the task. Once again I'd left it too long for a fizzy exciting dunk in the bucket, but the results weren't too bad and at least they felt a lot better. There's still gaps from the wax pattern, but you can see the tool marks here. There's really not meant to be any winners or losers in this challenge, but I don't think I'll be winning any prizes for the prettiest coin. But I think when it comes to picking out very fine detail, lost wax casting is the real winner. Martin, in his Bitcoin video, showed how it was possible for an expert sandcaster like him to obtain this level of detail. But Martin's got years of experience behind him and a skill set most of us will never achieve. But with lost wax casting, me, a complete novice, managed to knock out something with plenty of detail in my first and second ever attempt at the technique. Imagine the sort of things experts like Paul Hamler and John Dersch can achieve. Well, actually, you should go and have a look. So that's it for me, don't forget there are other competitors in this challenge, so look out for their videos and give them a thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this challenge guys, and if you did, please drop me some comments. Your support means a lot and encourages us YouTubers to keep going. Hopefully there will be more challenges in the future, but I think we'll need to see how this one goes first. So that's it for now guys, thanks for watching.